Hello, BookTube. I thought I'd walk us through a tiny bit of my uh, mail delivery for today, bookwise. Uh, four titles that came. I haven't had much of a chance to look at them. I thought we'd look at them together. Uh, the first one being 60 Degrees North by Maliki Talek. This is a travel writing slash memoir of his about Finland and, you know, northern Canada and Siberia, the, the, the countries that are located on the 60th parallel, past which is the Arctic Circle. Uh, I've always have a soft spot for travel writing uh, because before I took up sole possession of this couch <laughs> and ceased to move, I did a huge amount of traveling in my life. Uh, and these kinds of books often bring me back and bring back wonderful memories. The, the thing that I haven't read this at all. It comes out in July from Pegasus Books. The thing that gives me the pause about it is the memoir part. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, it's certainly a, it's as promising a subject as it is inhospitable an area. <laughs> uh, the next one is a novel. The Throwback Special uh, by Chris Bachelder, who the name sounds familiar to me. He did uh, oh, he did Bear vs. Shark. <laughs> Didn't know what to make of that book. Uh, this one seems every bit as as unconventional. Uh, the plot summary goes a little bit like this. Here is the absorbing story of 22 men who gather every fall to painstakingly reenact what ESPN calls the most shocking play in NFL history. And Washington Redskins dubbed the throwback special. The November 1985 play in which the Redskins' Joe Theismann had his leg horribly broken by Lawrence Taylor of the New York Giants live on Monday Night Football. Now... If you are strong of stomach, you can always Google what people watching that game actually saw happen to Joe Theismann's leg. It's... I have seen a lot of violence, a lot of mangling and destruction in my life, human and animal, and it still gives me pause that that should have happened. <laughs> so that's a promising premise right there. I thought I'd give you just a... I, I dipped into the prose just a bit. I wanted to show you uh, just a bit of what this author can do. He's actually really good in a, in a kind of a lighthearted way. Uh, this is the very beginning of the first chapter. Would it... The woman at the front desk was squinting disapprovingly at her monitor. She touched her temple with her fingertips and blinked slowly, as if reluctant to resume eyesight. She did not look up. Is there any way that... Uh, the woman twisted her thumb ring, grimaced at the data on her screen. She was not, she made clear, available for hospitality. The thumb ring, purchased from a street vendor, was vaguely Celtic in design. Would it be possible at all to check in? Robert's voice was too high. He often had to remind himself to deepen his voice, but invariably it would rise again to a pitch that, assumed his, that assured his auditor that he was non-threatening. It was an animal signal. He might as well have had a shaggy tail tucked against his inseam. I submit to you, the pitch of his voice said, I acquiesce to the larger desk, that brass pineapple. I would like another mint, but I will not take one. <laughs> so this could be entertaining. I'm not a football guy. I'm not a sports novel guy usually, but uh, we'll give it a try. Uh, the next one is also a novel. I know nothing about it. Uh, it's How to Party with an Infant by Cowie Hart Hemmings, who wrote a book called The Descendants a few years ago that was made into a movie starring George Clooney. And I remember that book. That book was the one of the hardest acts to pull off in contemporary fiction. It was both light and good. Both fun and smart. A, a strange combination. Uh... So I, I dipped into this just a little to see if there was any... I haven't read it yet, but I wanted to see if there was, this comes out in uh, August. I want to see if there was a hint of that. And, uh, and there is. <laughs> this is the story of... Here, let's see here. Two years ago, when she, was, when she told her boyfriend Bobby she was pregnant, Mele imagined he'd drop to one knee and propose. Instead, he announced he was engaged to someone else. <laughs> Raising Ellie as a single mom in San Francisco is no cakewalk, but Melly has navigated the mommy minefields to the best of her ability. Uh, and this is the, the beginning of the book. Uh, Ellie, a wonderful mistake, 
is two and a half years old. Amazing. Melly remembers bringing her home from the hospital, her little head not yet fitting in the support cushion of the car seat. Melly kept looking back in disbelief. Two days prior, she had left her apartment without a baby, and now she was returning with one. There were times in those first weeks when Ellie cried and cried, her face always shaking to the right, and Melly wanted to throw her out of the window. She would cry alongside her baby, wondering what was to become of her life as a single mom, the love of her life having knocked her up, then run back to the love of his life. But now, when she looks at her daughter, she wonders what was even good about life before her. What did she have? What did she do with all that time? That's encouraging. Certainly long before August I will read this. Uh, and our last one, uh, much more along my line of country, this is uh, Admiral Bill Halsey by Thomas Alexander Hughes. It is, as far as I know, the first scholarly, first full-length biography of, of Bill Halsey, uh, who was the, the patent of the Pacific. He was the, the, the marquee naval commander of the United States forces of World War II and was the man responsible, along with a baker's dozen of embarrassing errors. It would have gotten anyone without his genius cashiered in an instant. Uh, he was responsible for the, the slog up the Solomon Islands that might look like grinding inevitability on paper and in hindsight, but many are the naval commanders who could have screwed that up. Uh, and uh, I read this in ARC, and I'm going to gobble it up in hardcover. Uh, as, as I've made clear on this channel, I love books about World War II. But uh, I wanted to read you a little bit of this author. This author knows his subject, and I wanted to read you just a little bit of that. This is a paragraph about Halsey the Man. Uh, despite the strong current of clergymen in his lineage Halsey was not religious when duty or custom compelled attendance at church he preferred an upper class Episcopalian ethos as did the preachers in his bloodline he believed in God but as he was not in the navy Halsey had little time for him those are capital H's Halsey was never anything other than a navy man by midlife naval mores had become part of his fiber he had no abiding friendships beyond naval circles no outside interests no hobbies to him, the second story of a home was the upper deck, the rear seat of a car, the stern sheets, his baggage, his gear. He read, but haphazardly, and nearly always for professional reasons. That's good stuff. Uh, and the, the author carries that smart, but you know approachable tone all throughout this book. So it will be uh, yet another standout biography in a year that's starting to rack them up That's uh, and that's, we're only in the summer the, the fall is when they, they come swift as swallows so we'll see and there you go that's a that's a little glimpse into my mail box today the stuff that, that this is a, a, a about one third of what came today uh, an interesting Friday as always so I thought I'd share it with you uh, and we'll see what happens tomorrow or let me know if any of these interest you and also let me know if you'd like me to do this more often uh, thank you booktube I'll see you tomorrow